So without taking much time, let me invite the chief guest uh, of the National Skin Conclave, Andhra Pradesh edition, Sri Bhugan Rajendranath, Honorable Minister for Finance, Planning, Commercial Taxes, Skill Development and Training and Legislative Affairs, Government of Andhra Pradesh. A huge round of applause for him. Thank you, sir. Sri Ajay Reddy, Head Skill Development Corporation. Sri Suresh Kumar Garu, Principal Secretary, Skill Development and Training. Shri Bola Bhaskar Garu, Commissioner College Education. Dr. Ravishankar Ayanar Garu, Commissioner of Police, Vishakapatnam City. Vinod Kumar Garu, MD and CEO of uh, State Skill Development Corporation. Mr. Cap Dong Lee, Chief Administrative Officer of Kia Motors India. Srimati Navya Garu, Director, Employment and Training, Government of Andhra Pradesh. Shri Setu Madhavan Garu, CEO of the MSME Corporation. Various participants and representatives as well as delegates from uh, different governments and uh, industry as well as academia and all other delegates who have otherwise been kind enough to attend this national skill conclave being held here in Vishakhapatnam. Andari Kuda, na namaskar. Normally, common man's perception of skill, generally it is like being able to do something well, precision. And otherwise, the normal perception is something to do with technical industry, something to do with machining. One of the speakers was just mentioning, I think it's uh, the Vice Chancellor of, uh, I'm sorry, I haven't taken your name, the Vice Chancellor, ma'am. It is generally, a common man's perception is something to do with machining and plumbing and uh, uh, welding, etc. But this is far beyond that. But at the same time, the foundation remains to be the same. The foundation for skills still remains to be the same. It's just that over a period of time with evolution and then the modern day's requirement, now it is about employment, about productivity, about progress, and about adding capacity, knowledge to whatever we are already doing in order to get a better outcome. So there's been a manifold change in what skilling is about. A good example that uh, I actually uh, experienced in recent times, while on a trip uh, to Europe, we happened to transit through Germany, en route to Switzerland. So at Switzerland, what we could notice was anything, anything is just precise and perfect. We travel for hundreds of miles. Very rarely do you get a small undulation on the road. Any curb pavement that is there, very rarely do you have a stone that is a little uneven. You go to a hotel, very rarely do you find a gap anywhere. From the tiles in the washrooms, to the plumbing, to the fixtures, right up to the most high quality product that is made in Switzerland. Everything is to do with precision. Now, fundamentally again, it starts with skill. But from skill, slowly it evolves into progress. Then, while we translated through Germany, we thought since we are passing by, we thought why not we study the skilling uh, system that is normally talked about in the world. So we spent a couple of days and then went around various uh, uh, institutes of theirs to see what German skilling is about, where their TV, TVT uh, system of Germany. Then what we realized was three, four decades ago, Germany, the TVT system that they actually had designed worked well, but now even they are thinking of changing their uh, 
the way that uh, they've been doing scaling for the last four, four, four decades. Initially, it was about more of on-job training and less of theory. And then subsequently, there is a way where you get credits and you can transit from one to another. You can also go from your regular TVET to regular engineering uh, and other courses. And again, in Germany, mostly it's about engineering. Now, the youngsters of, of today, I believe, want to study well and do better academically. So the demand for their TVET is slowly going down. So they're in the process of revisiting their TBT system that is uh, in vogue today. So after this, what we observed and we tried to adopt in Andhra Pradesh was, we visited Germany, then we tried to take a little from Korea and then from Vietnam, Bangladesh, various different countries, all the new countries that have been doing well industrially and otherwise recently, and the ones that have shown a lot of growth, adopted a little bit of good practices from here and there and tried to design a system for our state. We also took a lot of uh, inputs from various states uh, in India. We also took some inputs from ITIs in Maharashtra. Maharashtra, as ma'am said, is amongst the few states where I think most of their ITIs are actually located within the MIDCs. So the location of an ITI within the MIDC, Maharashtra Industrial Development Corporation layout, enables them to have on-job training conveniently. Similarly, after Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu is one other state that has done well in this uh, area. The employment and employability of uh, the diploma holders and otherwise the ITI certificate holders and something related to that is good in Tamil Nadu. Himachal again is one state that we have observed where the government employment in certain areas like work inspectors, etc. actually has to have, the qualification is you have to come out of one of the government institutes. So every state has adopted their own, they have evolved their own systems, but we also took a little bit of practices from here and there. And during my young years, something to do with skilling that actually uh, registered in my mind. I wouldn't want to name the company, but I'm sure most of you will be able to guess what it is. Three, four decades ago, we had very few people making automobiles in India. So in my young days, I went to take delivery of a new car. You know how that feeling is, happy, and then you go and take delivery. So then, the gap between the window glass and the door, there was a gap. A clean gap between the glass and the door. So then I asked the guy, the dealer, it's a new car, brand new car. So I asked the dealer, if it rains, water is going to go into this. Water will go between the window pane and the door. So don't you have some sort of a rubber washer or something? Then he said, no sir, we have a solution to that. So I said, what is that solution? He opened the door, he showed me down, there are holes down, sir, water will come and go down. So this was how we had products in our country three, four decades ago. From there to now, if we see the transformation, we go and see Kia now, state of art amongst the best of the plants, not in the country, but in the world. We can see the quality and the amount of uh, effort and amount of uh, uh, contribution to skilling that's happening over there. So then I thought at some point of time, this, this, is, this is a particular area where our country were really far, far, far behind. So all of these things actually added to having some sort of a, some sort of a idea on a concept on how to do better while the other countries are progressing, why are we lagging behind? So then, in the process of having our own uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, skill system, we had the guidance of our Honorable Chief Minister. Then we thought, let's have something that actually immediately addresses both employability as well as better quality. 
So we designed something called a cascading skill ecosystem, where we have a unit called a skill hub, which is at the bottommost level. So bottommost level we thought is probably an assembly constituency is one. So here we try to use whatever resource that is already available instead of trying to create new ones. So we started using the premises and facilities that are available in ITIs, in polytechnics, in government colleges, so that we have a sooner, uh, lesser gestation period. And what sort of courses? So we try to design the courses in such a way or adopt courses in such a way that they actually meet the requirement of the local industry. So every unit in assembly constituency, half the courses actually try to meet the requirement of local industry. The other half of the courses are some things where you can go out. And then we also have a second tier called the skill colleges or center of excellence. So center of excellence in a pyramid, this is the second tier. Center of excellence again, so in the skill hub, we give the training up to NSQF 4 level. In the college, we give training up to NSQF 6. So colleges, again, instead of trying to establish new colleges, whatever existing colleges or any institutes that have capacity or that have the facility to provide skilling up to NSQF 6. For example, a classic case is SEMS Vizai. There's a unit called Center of Excellence for Marine and Shipbuilding in Vizai. This actually is a part of the Ministry of Shipping. It's a beautiful institute. I think it would cost anywhere close to 100 crores today to establish that. It was actually not functioning to full capacity. The reason being, their recruitment, their uh, uh, the way that they actually were recruiting people into their institute was not uh, uh, robust. So we tied up with them. Now we give the feed. It is running full capacity. And we also match with the state government fund as well as whatever help we can tap from Government of India schemes. So this is how we were able to establish about 27 in all. So one for every parliament. And on top, like ma'am has said, we are in the process of designing our skill university where we intend to not only monitor the entire uh, skilling uh, as a subject, but also the examinations and uh, the higher level of any NSQF skills that have to be imparted, as well as any research that can take place, that we intend to do in the universe. So this is the pyramid that we have uh, designed. And uh, in Andhra Pradesh, this whatever I'm saying now is actually for the delegates here to also understand how much our state and our departments here have uh, put heart and soul into this. Now, when it comes to the logo, we wanted to design a logo. So normal way of designing a logo is we try to get some private help, consultants help. So the big three, big four consultants, normally we tell them, please design a logo. So now it came a first cut. The first cut was, as usual, a protractor, a compass, etc. I said, no, it cannot be just a protractor and a compass. It has to be something unique, something different. So skill does not mean just some lathe machine welding turning alone. Skill has to be 360 degrees. It has to be medical and healthcare. It has to be hospitality. Anything, anything that we do, skill, we better the whatever is happening. So then second cut. Second cut came again with a round, the round being a wheel and inside lots of nuts, bolts and washers, etc. I said, no again. Finally, we thought, okay, let us use our own skills. So me and our secretaries and our people in the department, lot of them, we thought, what is it that an employer would want from his workmen? So one would be capacity, one would be precision skills, etc. One would be loyalty. One would be hard-working nature. So all this. So I said, 
when we go to volvo the logo of the volvo is a seat belt that does not have nuts bolts right it's a seat belt why because volvo invented the seat belt so similarly dbers does not say dbers diamonds dbers says it just says diamond is forever because 90% of the diamonds either way are dbers so we said something like that and then we in house we designed our logo which will be inaugurated shortly it is a horse and a, something like a phoenix a horse which has both the capacity to work precision taking orders loyal hard working and also something like a phoenix where it is immortal within a sun sun because the sun shines as well as andhra pradesh being on the east coast the sun strikes andhra orissa first so that is the reason that we thought sun so here what i would like to convey is whatever we have done here in andhra we have put heart and soul into it and we hope that this conclave will actually facilitate a good interaction between all the delegates who are here with our own system where we can benefit mutually we can contribute as well as take lot of help and contribution from your own experience as well as your own strength and together not only our individual states but also help in making our country prosper thank you the uh, bugannu rajendra ji uh, for your words uh, and also showing his vision on what what was being done and what needs to be done thank you so much uh, thank you so much can i have a huge round of applause for him please the chief guest of uh, national skill conclave ap